Good afternoon, you're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. I'm Phil Falcone with my co-host Jeremy Ricci here on WWDB 860 AM Studios, high atop the City Line Avenue skyline, every Thursday at 3 p.m. and Saturday evenings at 6 p.m. If you want to ask us a question or you have a real estate need, give us a call at 888-329-3306, 888-329-3306. We'll be taking calls today. And it's not just because we don't have a script all ready to go, but we're actually like to listen to our callers, give us a call in and tell us what they're thinking about. So let me tell you who Addicted to Real Estate is and what we do. We buy houses. So if you know of a house that you think could be a good opportunity for investors, give us a call and let us know about it. Right? We're always looking to buy more houses. That's the primary thing we do for a living, and we love to buy houses. So if you know of one or if you have a house that you'd like to sell, we can make it very quick and easy and clean for you to get rid of that house so you can run off to that new job you just got in California making twice as much money. So we also have a real estate agency where investors can come and hang their license. So if you're a real estate investor who is also a real estate agent or you're an agent who wants to be an investor, check us out. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. We have three offices, one in Montgomeryville, one in Hatboro, and one in Huntington Valley. We have a shortened website for that one. It's A2RE.com. A2RE.com. That's a good one. Yeah. And we also do investor and realtor education meetings every month. And you can check check us out at AddictedToRealEstate.com. AddictedToRealEstate with the number 2.com. So, how you guys doing today? I'm doing great. We're actually broadcasting this live today. I'm on Facebook. Uh, anybody that's on Facebook that can hear this, hop on and you can see the video of this radio show as well. So we got a guest in the studio today, Moro L. Moro is a real estate agent in our office, and uh, he just just got his license, and he's uh, learning the tricks of the trade. And we got lots of tricks. <laughs> Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome, Moro. Welcome. We're Are you gonna, addicted to real estate yet, or what? I'm addicted. All right. <laughs> Completely. I don't know. I don't know. We got to turn up the volume on him. Let me see. <laughs> Let's see. Hey, how about you, Macaroni? How you doing? Feeling good, cause we're live. Yeah, what do you think of that football trade? How'd you like that trade? Great idea. Uh, are you talking about the Eagles and Vikings trade? No, no we're talking, talking about uh, trade and fill for uh, macaroni. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, it was a good trade. I mean, like, Vikings basically got robbed, but hey. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. If they win the Super Bowl, I guess they, they won't feel like they no, got I would, robbed. I would buy you a sandwich if they win the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of sandwich? Whatever sandwich you like. Right, a I'm macaroni take... sandwich, of course. Mara, write that down. <laughs> write that down. That macaroni I said he's going to buy me a sandwich. That's definitely you. something I'm interested in. <laughs> Free sandwich. So uh, one of the things I want to talk about today is uh, our big meeting coming up next week, next Wednesday at 7 p.m. at Maggie's Waterfront Cafe. If you've ever wanted to learn about real estate investing, if in the, in the back of your mind you always wanted to be an investor, you watch those flipping shows on HGTV, <laughs> And you wanted to know how they do it. Well, guess what? Here's your big chance. If you ever wanted to know where Maggie's Waterfront Cafe is, this is your chance. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be live. That's right. Live human beings. We're actually going to show up at this meeting. It's right by the Academy Road exit of I-95. This is going to be September 14th at 7 p.m., second floor of Maggie's Waterfront Cafe. And we're going to be talking about the amazing real estate investing business. Right? And how you can learn how to buy houses for yourself. And you can make, you can make off of one real estate deal, you can make the amount of money that some people work all year for. It's an amazing business and something we're dying to share with you. You can almost make the kind of money that people who are on unemployment make. Almost. I don't really know what people on unemployment make, but I, I don't assume know. we could eclipse that number with a. Their hourly rate days. is high. Is it? Yeah, it's high. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Jeremy likes to pick on the unemployed. I don't. I want to help. I want to employ them. Right? Let's make them real estate agents. Come on. Put them in our office. Get uh, your license. We wouldn't be employing them then. They'd be independent contractors. Oh, that's true. That's true. All right. All right. So if you're unemployed and you want to become an independent contractor, give us a call. All right? 888-329-3306. And let's talk about ways you can get involved in this business. All right? So stick around. We've got some topics we're going to share with you, some of the real estate deals we're doing, 
what we're going to be talking about at a meeting that's coming up next week and a trailer park deal that we just bought. We want to share it with you. You're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, by investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. I can't stand this traffic. I need a vacation. Slip away to Siesta Key in Sarasota, Florida. You can stay at one of our vacation rentals at the number one rated beach in the United States. Check out GoSiesta.com where you can rent a fully furnished vacation rental for less than the cost of a stinking hotel room. Check out GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. That's 863-2-SIESTA or GoSiesta.com. GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. I'm going. When dealing with your home financing, you need a lender you can trust. A mortgage lender like Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services Incorporated. The purchase of your home will likely be the largest financial investment you will make in your lifetime. Work with a mortgage provider who considers your long-term financial goals and puts you first. Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services will provide you competitive mortgage rates and service beyond belief for every step of the loan process. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649 today to visit about your mortgage needs. Thomas Farris, NMLS, number is 785398. First Choice Loan Services Incorporated, NMLS, number 210764, equal housing lender. Robinson Insurance Group is addicted to real estate's preferred insurance broker. Why deal with an insurance agent who only represents one company? Robinson Insurance Group can quote you all the companies and shop to get you the best insurance for your needs. Fix and flip, landlord coverage, last minute deals, no problem. Investor deals are no issue and nobody is ever denied. Call Robinson Insurance Group, 215-918-2555. That's 215-918-2555. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the Internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms. You get the mailboxes. You get the printer, the copier, the scanner. You get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. And right now we're going to talk about some deals. What kind of deals we have in the pipeline? I think um, there's a couple that we can talk about today. Yeah. We just sold one. Everybody saw that hoarding house. Did you guys see on Facebook or whatever? That house that we sold, we cut down all the trees and all that stuff. So that one's gone. But, you know, hey, it's not a done deal until it's a done deal. So they, well, we, we, haven't, we haven't actually settled on it yet, so it might come back if, if the buyer can't get his financing. But uh, he's a pretty credible guy, so I'm sure he will. But let's talk about a deal that I have that um, somebody out there today can benefit from. I, I have a deal in Hapro. It's a single-family home. It's It's got three bedrooms. It's got a really nice parking lot out front. It's got a big backyard. And this is definitely a flippable home. The home needs a lot of work. And somebody can pick it up cheap. About $125,000 is what I'm looking for to get on this house. And if you give me a call on my private line, 267-988-2000, 267-988-2000, Give me a call, and I'll get you in to see this property. Somebody's probably going to pick this thing up in the next four or five days. It's, it's definitely a good flipping opportunity. And if you're out there and you're a real estate investor and you're looking to do a, a nice flip, it's in Hapro, great area to do flips. And I happen to have a store right at the corner of Byberry in York. And you might see my uh, red BMW out there. So if it says I buy houses on it. That'll kind of let you know that it's my car and I'm there. 
So hey, stop by and talk to me about it. I'm going to ask the question that probably some of the skeptics are going to say. Hey, Phil, it's right in your backyard. Why aren't, why aren't we keeping it? Why aren't we flipping it? And, um, you know, let's, that's, I'm just saying there, there could be people that are saying that. So I'd like to hear your answer to that. Okay. Well, that's an easy question to answer. And, and a lot of times people come up to me and ask me those kind of things. Like if you're teaching at a, at a real estate meeting and you're selling books or something, people say, why are you selling books? If you're so great at real estate investing, why don't you just go do that? Say, well, maybe I enjoy helping people. Maybe I enjoy teaching people. Now, in regards to the, to these houses, sometimes the reason that we sell the houses is because I only have so many construction crews. I only have so much time available to get multiple jobs done at the same time. And right now, we've got deals racked, packed, and stacked. So I still want to make money off the deals I find because I spend a lot of money on marketing with I buy houses, cars, I buy houses, trucks, I buy houses, stores, radio shows, things like this don't come for free. They cost money. And that's one of the ways that we recoup the money is by we'll sell a deal to one of our students or one of the flippers or one of the would-be investors listening to this show. Yeah, we have a, a rehab going on right now down in Siesta Key. It's actually going to be our first fix and flip that we've done down there. We've mostly kept all of them as rentals, but this one is a uh, canal front home. It's on the water. It's got a pool in the backyard. It's uh, right behind the village where all the, uh, the dance and the music and the bands and the restaurants are. So uh, this will be our first flip down there. And the same thing goes true there. We have a property that's vacant right now waiting to get fixed. Because we're working on other things, we got other things going on. So, um, so if you guys are interested in some of these deals, these are these are wholesale deals. These are deals that we either have under contract or we bought them and then we're going to resell them before we fix them. So it's, you've heard of fix and flip. This is just a plain flip without the fix, and uh, we do that often. A lot of times they call it a wholesale deal. Sometimes it's a double closing, but these are all things that that real estate investors do, and we've we've been very successful selling to investors simply because. Those are our peers. Those are people that we know. They're people that come to us looking for deals. So if you guys are looking for deals, what you want to do is go to addictedtorealestate.com and get on our list. You want to get notified first of deals that come up, go to addictedtorealestate.com. You put your name and your email address in there, and Phil will blast out emails. And the people that see them before anybody else is the people that have put their name and email address up on that website. Yeah, so. really the, the, the main benefit to that is – I love to give the deals to the people who give their support to me. So if you put your name and email address in and you're watching my TV show and you're listening to the radio show and you're coming to our meetings, I send out the real estate deals that are the best deals that I can find. I send them out to my list first. Sometimes I'll put them up on the MLS, but I never do that at the same time I put them out to my list. I always give the people on my list four or five days to take a look at the property. So if you see something on there that blasts out to you and it says, hey, check out this deal, there's real deals there. I don't put out like, uh, you know, uh, retail value properties. I put out amazing deals. The people on my list are too smart and they wouldn't stay on my list if I did that. You know, it's not just because we love you guys. We, of course we do. If we, We're investors. We love investors. We're addicted to real estate. But it's also because we save money on the commission. If we don't put it on the MLS and we could sell it before it goes on the MLS – we save money on the commission. So I think that's a great segue. How could, how could they save money on the commission? Good idea. We're going to talk about a little bit about why if you are a real estate investor, that maybe the right thing to do right now is to get your real estate license. I uh, put an offer in on a $2.8 million building in Florida, and I figured out that the real estate commission on each side of that transaction was $84,000 for one deal. So the real estate agents are both making $84,000. Now, the real estate agent brought me the deal, so I'm fine with that. But I would say that that kind of uh, piqued my interest that maybe I should get my Florida real estate license, and I'm doing it, and I'm yep. doing it. So. Well, you would think for $84,000 he would shoot me an email every once in a while and let me know what the heck's going on with that yeah, deal. Yeah, So, yeah, but so if you guys are real estate investors and you want to be in an investor-friendly office, you found the right guys. We have three offices. We have one. In Line, Lexington, it's actually on 309, where County Line Road dead ends into 309, and still right on the edge of Bucks and Montgomery County. We have another one in Hatboro, and Phil hangs his hat in Hatboro one all the time. That one's uh, right in downtown Hatboro, very prominent location, Byberry and York Road. And the third one is in Executech Suites, the uh, Executive Suite Center, and that is a third office. That is a uh, the third location for us. So if any one of those is convenient to you, frankly, I don't care if you're in Erie, Pennsylvania. You have the right to hang your license in any Pennsylvania office, and you can hang your 
license in a investor friendly office. So that's us, addicted to real estate dot com. But what are some of the other benefits of people either doing deals through our office or you know, what would you say are the things that, that people are concerned about the most when they go to list a property? Well, a few things that come to mind that are great benefits to people is is that when the office is owned by real estate investors and, and the investors who own that office are doing some of the most uh, creative real estate deals that I've ever heard of in my 27 years in the business, it's pretty certain that whatever it is that you want to do as a real estate agent, whether it's a wholesale deal or whatever it is you're going to do, maybe it's something a little more complicated like subject to or seller financing or using private money or putting properties in the name of a trust, all these things are something that we encourage our agents to do. Where if you were in a traditional, conventional brokerage, they wouldn't want you to be doing that kind of stuff. All they want you to do is take buyers and sellers and put them together and help facilitate a deal. And the one problem I have with that is typically if you have three people sitting in a room, you have a buyer, you have a seller, and you have a real estate agent, the real estate agent is the one making the least amount of money. Usually the seller is probably making the most, and the buyer may be making a heck of a lot of money as well. So why would you want to be just the person who is the agent? I want to be the buyer. I want to be the seller. One thing that Jeremy always says that I think is terrific, I'll hear a real estate agent say, I found this really great deal. Now all I got to do is find a buyer for it. I'm like, hello, why don't you just buy it? Yeah. You know? It's because of self-limiting beliefs that agents, a lot of agents, they want to be in the real estate business, and they do want to own property. But they're, they're, they have several things. Number one, first and foremost, is fear. They're afraid of, of actually taking the plunge and buying their first deal. But secondly, they're afraid of having the, right, having the money to do it. And uh, we show ways that you can, you know, your, your book, it's actually on Amazon right now, How to Buy Houses with None of Your Own Money. And, you know, like Phil says, it's not, it's not that you buy them with no money. It's just none of your own money. So um, if you guys are out there and want to look, you, the book was just released. So it's uh, fresh on Amazon. We, uh, we have it out there. You can take a look at that. There's plenty of strategies in there that overcoming that objection of having money is, is – there's how many pages? 300 pages of how to not overcome that objection? About 100,000 words. Yeah, so. 100,000 words of how to overcome the money objection. Yeah. So. You know, it's, it's funny. Yesterday there was a woman who came into the office. She wanted to talk to me about real estate investing. She wants to learn real estate investing. She wants to get involved in it. And she said uh, – I said, well, why haven't you done it in the past? I mean, you know, I'm pretty sure you've been on this earth for a few decades. Well, what's kept you up to this point? She said, well, I didn't have any money. And I said, well, what makes you think you need money to buy real estate? She goes, oh, come on. Everybody needs money to buy real estate. I said, you know, I heard of this book, and I got up, and I started strolling about eight feet over to the coffee table. And I said, I heard of this book. I, it's called uh, How to Buy Houses with None of Your Own Money. Oops, oh, here's a copy of it. And I picked it up and showed it to her, and I said, you know, for $20, and it's only $20, you know, you'll learn the secrets of how to do this. She didn't buy the book, but she did say she wants to become a bird dog machine. She said she loves real estate, and she wants to go out and find me leads. And she has already come back. This happened yesterday, right? She's already come back to the office this morning with three deals. Really? Uh, I haven't had a chance to even look at them yet, but I have a feeling um, that this woman is reminding me of some other bird dog people that we've done business with who may have driven us a little crazy, but we'll find out. We were talking about uh, just having a creative office. Moro, you weren't you weren't down. Uh, you drove down separately, but Phil and I are driving. He had the top down in his car, and we're shouting at each other. <laughs> and uh, we're we're saying. And I was talking about about getting my real estate license, and Phil yeah. was kind of commenting on all the, the the funky things that you learn in real estate school. We're talking about riparian rights for yeah. like you know streams and rivers, and we're talking about air rights. And he goes, "Come on, who's actually gonna who's actually gonna use that stuff?" And I'm like, "Well, creative guys like us probably yeah. would." I, I mentioned air rights, and I'm like, you know, we could sell our buildings and retain the air rights above those things so that uh, if somebody wants to build a third story or fourth story, they're going to have to come to us. So yeah. we sell the building first, and then we sell the, we sell the first two floors one day and hold on to the anything above that. I wonder what they would tax us for owning the deed to just the air rights. That's, that'd be a weird uh, scenario. But anyway, we do some creative stuff, and that's just kind of how our mind, you know, we're, we're kind of getting together on the ride down to the radio station today. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Right, so if you uh, if you want to take a look at some of the deals that we're talking about, like the one in Hapro or the uh, or the Hoarders House as we refer to it, you can go to uh, my YouTube channel, which is called Addicted to Real, Real Estate. Estate. How about that? You're noticing a trend here, and subscribe to my channel. 
And the reason that's really clever is because uh, the minute I put up a video about a new real estate deal that I found, you're going to be the first one who knows about it. Or if you're on the email list, you'll yeah, get it. Yeah. You'll get a link to the video right. as well. It hits the email list 15 minutes later. Right? Like, just, subscribe, yeah. all that kind of but stuff. Some right? people are YouTube people, and they they're not email people, and they just like YouTube. I mean, I love YouTube. In fact, I like to tell people that I have a doctorate from the University of YouTube. That's yeah. right. If you need, I, I won't operate on you, but I might. You know, you could pay me to give you a consultation, and I'll probably cure your problems. With all this mention of YouTube, maybe we should ask uh, Google to give us a sponsorship. <laughs> For yeah. the show, I mean, we're promoting their product, right? Shoot them an email. Yeah. I won't mind. Yeah. What's Google's email address? <laughs> it's probably at gmail.com. Info at google.com. <laughs> <laughs> right. right? ABC.com. No. So uh, why don't we start uh, talking about our wonderful uh, HOA love, the love that we have for homeowners associations. Yeah, we brought this up because I was. Uh, we're, we're talking about this $2.8 million building we're looking at was a, a series of eight condos mm. in a 10-condo development. So right away, if we were to buy these things, if this deal goes down, we're actually controlling 80% of the homeowners association. And that just makes me feel real good because I hate other people voting on your stuff, but actually we get 8 out of 10 votes. And I think uh, you, most condo docs, I haven't seen the condo docs for this association, but most of them say, you know, you have 75% vote or whatever. Then majority, you know, maybe sometimes you need 51%. Most things, you're part of another condo association with your uh, office building. Yeah, what is it, 75% in your Yeah, you know, I, I don't remember. It depends on what it is that you're trying to do. Uh, but we can squash the whole association. Know, Wouldn't that be fun? You know, Could we buy the things and just say, we're now dismantling the association? <laughs> see, yeah, I do sit on the board of a condo association, but when they gave me that 190-page document, I didn't really read it. Just like when the guy who came in my store today and tried to give me a phone book, I didn't read that either. I sent him, sent him packing. Somebody came in to try to give you a phone book? Yeah, he came in with like 20 phone books, like the little business-to-business -business ones. Yeah. I said, dude, nobody uses those anymore. <laughs> I mean, you know. He goes, well, can I have your business cards and my boss thinks I was here? Like, <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. I'll trade you one business card if you will not leave that phone book here. Thank you. <laughs> so that was the deal I made with him. Yeah, you know, I always say to people about homeowners associations you know where you have the federales and you have the state and you have the local municipality you know if you're going to invest in real estate you really have to consider do, do you want and maybe the answer is yes maybe the answer is no but do you really want one more form of government voting on your assets because if you think about it a homeowners association is kind of a form of government right yeah i mean i i, I certainly i actually like condos most real estate investors will not buy condos i i own commercial condos and i uh well they're they're office buildings, okay? They're used as office buildings, but it's in a development which is primarily for office and commercial. And, I, and I've owned many residential condos, and one of the reasons that I like them is because they're cheap. So you can go in and, and grab these things, and you can rent them out, and they're cheap, so there's a lot of young people who can afford them because the rent's cheap. So it makes a lot of sense to me. But the, the, these evil people at these condo associations, they're trying to ruin it for me. Right, so we'll talk a little bit more about that when we come back. So we're going to talk about a, a big deal that we're buying in Florida and some of the homeowners association issues that we've had there. You're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. Have you heard about the recent low mortgage rates? Have you started thinking about refinancing your home? Why not work with a mortgage lender who puts you first? Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services Incorporated will provide you personalized service to make sure your home financing meets your needs both now and in the future. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649 today and learn how the current low interest rates may mean it's the right time for you to buy or refinance. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649. Thomas Farris, NMLS, number is 785398. First Choice Loan Services Incorporated, NMLS number 210764, Equal Housing Lender. Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. 
And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is Addicted to Real Estate with the number two dot com. Robinson Insurance Group is Addicted to Real Estate's preferred insurance broker. Why deal with an insurance agent who only represents one company? Robinson Insurance Group can quote you all the companies and shop to get you the best insurance for your needs. Fix and flip, landlord coverage, last minute deals, no problem. Investor deals are no issue and nobody is ever denied. Call Robinson Insurance Group, 215-918-2555. That's 215-918-2555. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites. 215-942-7701. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. Here with Phil Falcone and Jeremy Ricci. Thanks for for coming with us, Moro. This is uh, is your first time on the radio. Pretty fun? Yeah, it's fun. Tell us about what's going on with you. What do you got cooking? Uh, So I was out with a buyer last week on uh, Thursday. Showed him uh, six different properties. Went around different places of the city. He's actually a New York buyer um, looking for an investment property. He has a primary residence in New York City. Looking for something out here. He was told that Philly is a good you know, market to go into. So showed him around. A couple of them he liked. He's going to make an offer on a couple of them. So, you know, we'll see how that goes. You know, man, you sound good on the radio. <laughs> yeah. Have any women tell, told you that you have a bedroom voice? No. No? I've never, <laughs> never heard, heard that? that before. Okay. You know, I'll tell you what. One of the things about about uh, investors coming out of New York is they come down here and they see the taxes, the real estate taxes down here, yeah. and they just get flabbergasted. Yeah. They're like, what do you mean it's $900 a year? And that's exactly what happened because I did a uh, estimated closing cost sheet for him and for both properties that he liked, and he was like, oh, man, I didn't know it was going to be so much. I thought it was going to be around 4000 He was like, eh, no, there's you know, fees that the city and the state and municipality puts on there. Yeah, what yeah. they don't tell you is Philadelphia's fines. You pay low taxes, but they get you in <laughs> trash fines and all these parking tickets. Yeah. I just put a parking ticket in the mail today. Oh, that's yeah, when you buy a piece of real estate in Philadelphia, it's kind of like dropping a block of cheese near some rats. You know, they all, <laughs> they all come out and take a bite out of you, right? You know, every settlement sheet, you're like, what the hell are all these fees? Yeah, this, no. ch- this side, that side. Who are all these people coming to take money from me? It was a lot of fees. Yeah. So I see you got your name tag on. You got I Moro's do. got the hello, my name's Moro, and I'm addicted to real estate name tag. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we got these trucks. The trucks are wrapped with I buy houses. They cost a couple grand to wrap those <laughs> things. And these little $7 name tags actually get us quite, quite a bit of referrals. Yeah. Have you experienced anybody coming up to you with the name tag and, and talking to you about it? Or what? Yeah, people ask me about it. But you only wear it in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wear it every day, actually. People ask me about it all the time. Hey, you know, I see that you're addicted to real estate. Hello, how are you, Moro? <laughs> nice what, to meet you. So what's going on with the deal that uh, you and Charlie are looking at? Um, So that one, I'm not really sure about it. It's uh, been having a hard time getting in contact with the owner. Um, he's having issues as far as letting letting us view the property, but no one actually lived there, so I'm not really sure why it's not on lockbox. But um, we've been trying to get access to the property for a couple of weeks now. And just haven't had a chance to do it. We got one under contract that we we only found one of the sellers, and the lady uh, has her her husband is uh, the other seller, and she hasn't found him in eight years. Yeah, so if you're out there, Mister Seller, how about giving us a call? Yeah, we need yeah. your signature on some documents. <laughs> you got anything else going in the in the pipeline? 
Um, no, just uh, prospecting and trying to, you know, learn my neighborhood and learn the areas that I'm going into, like every agent should do. Yeah, what areas are you focusing on? Germantown, Mount Airy, West Oak Lane, um, the Maniunk area. Those are the general areas I want to focus on. A little bit of Willow Grove, too. Cool. Yeah. So you're doing it as a real estate agent and as an investor. You're yeah, going to buy stuff. And doing both. So. You're also taking on clients? Yeah. Yeah. So I look, I'm looking for, you know, investment properties as well as, you know, if someone wants to list their home with me or sell a home <clears throat> or if they want to, you know, buy something from the agent side, that's fine, too. What's your what's your ideal client for uh, if you were to take a you know take a client on? What, who's your ideal client? So my ideal client would be you know an investor, um, someone that is just looking for an investment deal that they're not going to live in. Um, that would be ideal for me. So something that they're just <clears throat> looking to do a little bit of work on, um, fix it up, list it with me possibly. You know if if not that's fine too. But that would be my ideal client would be an investor. Okay, so if you're in Mount Airy, if you're in Germantown, and you want to have a real estate agent who actually knows how to do creative real estate financing, you're going to call Mauro at? 267-714-4197. Cool. All right, it's official, all right? All yeah, right, welcome so to welcome to the team, Mauro. We're glad to have you on. Thanks. You know, it's good to be here. Yeah, I, I feel bad. I actually referred Mauro to a uh, online learning school. Ah. And... Uh, <laughs> And it was just like looking at slides, and then he finally went. Mark Cumberland, who also has a radio show on this yeah. station, he uh, we, we later referred him to Mark State, Mark's school, and he finished out with that much better. Huh? Oh, much easier. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the online class, it was it was just so much information, so many different laws that you have to learn. I mean, it's all good information, but you're just looking at slides all day. It's not the now, easiest. Now I'll tell you, I'm taking for the Florida uh, real estate license. I am taking online class but mine actually has a video and later after the show I'll, I'll show you a little sample of it but it actually has the video of an instructor teaching the class and has the video of the slides and it has the audio of the guy teaching the, you know you can hear him so it was kind of like a, a, a little bit better I think the one that I referred to, to was, was was pretty inexpensive <laughs> yeah. but it seems like it was boring as anything yeah. huh? so going going and, and taking your real estate classes live was much oh, much yeah, better it's much much better especially with a guy like Mark Cumberland because he has so many decades of experience he can relate everything in the book to a relatable topic that he's actually experienced in his life. So it makes it a lot easier to, for the people that need, you know, a little bit more context to what's going on in the book, it's really good. Yeah. All right. So uh, what do you say we talk about our new deal, the Crescent Beach Park? Oh, boy. This one's <laughs> awesome. Here, Mario, you got to take this. All right. So we're doing something pretty cool. We found an RV park that we're buying and uh, we're through the due diligence process. We had the survey done. We're, we're uh, just about to head to closing. And, uh, man, this, this place is going to be awesome. Have you ever got, you guys ever seen those TV shows where they have the, the tiny house where they put, more? you've seen them where they do the tiny oh, houses yeah, on tiny wheels house and there's all this crazy. There's yeah. like five different TV shows. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to take these tiny houses and, um, we're going to, we're going to put them on the RV park. Wow. And it's right across the bridge from Siesta Key Beach. So, mm. so we're going to take the tiny houses and we're going to rent them out by the week. Wow. Tiny, tinyhouseforaweek.com, you know, something, <laughs> something like that, right? And we're going to rent these as vacation rentals. So somebody, nice. you know, I don't know who the heck would want to live in a, a tiny house full time. I mean, a lot of people apparently. A lot of people, a lot of people like. Well, I don't know. I mean, there's only so many stars of the show, but there's definitely a lot of people that tune into that show. A lot, so yeah. my, my, you know, my view here is that we're going to. We're going to rent it to the people that like that show. I mean, yeah. you know, you, you want to go to a hotel and, and take selfies in the uh, the bland hotel? Or do you want to, like, you know, hop in the loft? Uh, you yeah. know, Phil's got some concerns about the loft idea. But there's, you know, there's, there's single-story bedroom tiny houses. There's all sorts of things we can do. And we're going to make some neat tiny houses. Actually, we're going to put 13 of them in this RV park. Awesome. And we're going to rent them out by the week, a week at a time, and do them as a vacation rental. Right now they're just renting the, the dirt, and we're going to be renting the tiny houses. So if you guys like that idea... Uh, GoSiesta.com is our website for the vacation rentals, and this uh, vacation rentals coupled with the tiny houses, I'm, I'm super excited about it. I'm really excited. About Sounds it. like a great idea. In fact, I just bought a, uh, I, I just bought a, a, a drone aerial quadcopter to take nice. videos and stuff like that. I, I think you got to register them now with the, yeah, FAA, with the FAA and all that yeah. stuff. But uh, hey, that's fine. I don't, I don't mind. Yeah. I think it'll be pretty cool. This is a you know project. what I'd say about the uh, registration with the FAA, right? What's that? Don't worry about it. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> 
until I get until I get like ask a, forgiveness a, instead of permission. Sniper, <laughs> snipers on me or something from like ask the, forgiveness the towers. instead of permission. No, yeah, like no. it's it's actually so, they were going to make it where you had a pilot's license to operate one of these drone things, and now you just they they retracted it, I think, and now I think you just have to register anything that's above a half a pound. Yeah, so, I heard that. Easy enough, you know. Well, let, let's. Stick to the trailer park for a while because i got some things I'd love to talk about that. When I first got into the business, e- actually even before I got into the business, I got contacted by a guy who was looking for an engineer to help him. And in a former life, before I was a real estate investor, I had an engineering degree. And I used to, you too, huh? and I used to do some projects for people. And this guy who owned a, a trailer park called me up, and uh, I went out to visit him. And he wanted me to design some crazy kind of machine for him that uh, – he, he it was a he had come up with a pretty cool way to put siding on these trailer parks and he wanted me to design a machine for him and I was totally not interested in the conversation. Instead I'm going, dude, how many of these things do you own? And he's like, Well, there's uh seven hundred or so in this in this park, but I only own like one third of them. I said, Oh he goes, I own the land under all of them, but I only own one third of them and I'm thinking Only? Oh, only own three hundred trailers? I said, what do these things rent for? And I forget what the number was back in the day. It might have been like 500 a month or something. But, you know, I, I, as an engineer, I was able to calculate 500 times 300, and it's a pretty big number. So, you know, I started to really always think about trailer parks throughout my whole career. And here I am 27 years later, and I'm finally going to own one. Now, we haven't settled on this one in uh, – in Florida yet, but we're scheduled to settle on it no later than Halloween. So we're definitely buying this thing. Yeah, we'll buy it sooner than that, though. I mean, yeah. I, I'd like to get the ball rolling because we have some we have some tiny houses to build, man. Or yeah. are we going to buy it? We have, we have a couple builders that we talk to. Maybe we build yeah. some ourselves. I don't well, know. Well, one of the things, you know, you're so excited about the tiny houses, but the part that I think you completely don't talk about is it's access to the beach. The number one rated beach in the United States. That's right. You heard me correctly. Better than Hawaii, better than California, is Siesta Key Beach. Yeah. And this place is less than a mile away from Crescent Beach, which is the best beach in the United States. Key. Right? And you can look it up for yourself. Look up a list of the best beaches in the United States, and you'll see Siesta Key every year is Comes either up. number one or number two, something like that. The guy that rates the beaches, he actually isn't allowed to make the, the number one beach. For some reason, as a rule, that he doesn't make the number one beach the same beach every year. But we're, I think, number one few years back, number two this year, because we're not allowed to be number one again. Uh, one of the uh, travel websites put it at the best beach. Sarasota. Travel which, Magazine did. Travel yeah, Magazine, yeah. There's another, uh, there's another website that said Sarasota, which Siesta Key is right off of the coast of Sarasota. They said that that was the number one city for lifestyle. Right. So, I, you know, some, I, love, I love Siesta Key. Thank you, Phil, for, for stumbling it across that town because it's a uh, – it's been it's been pretty great, you know. Well, it may have happened by accident, but it wasn't an accident. You know, I'm a beach bum. I love the beach. And if you're the kind of person that loves the beach, you have got to get yourself down to Siesta Key. And I know an easy way you can do that. Go to my website, gosiesta.com, and check out some of the houses. We have, we have like, big, beautiful beach houses that are right on the beach with swimming pools and everything you want. One bedrooms, two bedrooms, four bedrooms. We have a three-bedroom right across the street from the beach. I mean, we also have some cheap ones that are, like, just a few miles away from the beach. But the furthest that any one of our properties is from the beach is, like, three miles. Yeah, so and everybody drives their car down there. The parking is free. Parking's free. The beach, there's no uh, up in the Jersey Shore. They charge you to park. <laughs> And on top of that, they charge you to go on the beach. you got to wear, like, a beach tag. Mm. None of that down there. No. They even sell beer on the beach. Yeah, you can they drink Stella's drinks. on the beach. Yeah, you, go up to the, you can go up to the beach stand on Siesta Key Beach and get a Stella. Yeah. I mean, come on. Life doesn't get any better than that, man. You can drink it in the water. Go yeah. walk into the Gulf of Mexico and drink. Your, uh, first time I, first, it wasn't the first time I was on Siesta Key, but it was one of the first times. Maybe it was the second or third time I was there. I'm sitting there, and I'm like, Man, is that guy drinking beer in the in the Gulf of Mexico? I'm like, that's brilliant. Why aren't I doing that? Right? Is it a Mexican beer? Or <laughs> he was drinking Corona. Actually, hey, he was. Close he was. enough. Close <laughs> enough. Okay. So then, uh, the the day I was there, the water was like like uh, beach. It was like uh, bath water. You know, it was like 80 degrees or something. So I went out, and people were just staying out in the Gulf all day. While I'm out there, a seaplane comes flying in, lands. 
cruises close to the beach, just runs right up on the sandbar, guy hops out and walks up the beach. Now, <laughs> where else can you do that? That's I mean, good living. Yeah. yeah, we were down there just uh, the end of last month. Uh, we, right before the kids went back to school, I took my wife and the kids down there. And we're out in the Gulf of Mexico. I don't know if I told you this, Phil. There is a manatee that literally swam right by us. Everybody's, like, making all this big commotion. I'm wondering what the heck's going on. They got their camera phones out. I don't know what they're doing. We're here right down the water comes this manatee. It's more bigger than 10 feet long. I don't know. It's huge. Well, those things are, like, 1,000 pounds. And we're, I don't know, but it was, it was literally, like, if I, it was three feet away from us. It's, like, basically my in-laws are down with us. And my in-laws stepped backwards, and I stepped backwards so the manatee could swim through. That's how, that's how close it was. It was amazing. Yeah. And yeah. everybody in Florida, I got a couple guys on Facebook that said, oh, yeah, I see them all the time. Well, I don't know. It was a big deal to me. I've never seen that before. And we saw a yeah. dolphin once when we were out on your Hobie cat. But yeah, I, we, you know, we were sailing. We even saw a – didn't we see like a, a, a manta ray or a stingray or something wow. flapping? It's, I, I have the Hobie cat. We go down sailing sometimes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's a good way to look at real estate. You can't – all these expensive homes on the water, what a great way to look at them is yeah. by boat. Well, one time I was out on a boat. We went out water skiing, and we said, hey, let's go fishing for a little while first. And I and uh, the guy I was with, he caught like a uh, a baby hammerhead shark. And, you know, he um, he just cut the line, and he let it go. And I'm thinking to myself, hey, that was really cool, you know. Um, geez, if there's a baby hammerhead shark, maybe there's a mama and a daddy hammerhead here shark around skiing. here somewhere. <laughs> and then he, and right around the time that thought popped into my head, someone said, okay, let's go water skiing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, hey, well, it, is, it is Florida, you know, it is Florida. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a great place. And, and just investing in real estate in, everybody always gives us grief. You're, you're, you know, how do you invest 1,100 miles away? But I'll tell you what, it's not that hard. You, you get a good group of people. Yeah. You get somebody to help you out. We get a cleaning person. We get a handyman. We have a, a guy that mows the lawn down there. We got plumbers. And, you know, these aren't the first people that we pick down there. We, it's prob- we've probably gone through a couple different sets of each of those things. But uh, you get you get a good set of people, and they, they help you out. I, you know, Phil, Phil gets people asking all the time, how do you – what happens if there's a problem down there? Well, same thing that happens up here. You pick up the phone, instead of the plumber having a 215 phone number, your plumber's got a 941 phone number. That's the only difference, right? So, Okay, so when we come back, we're going to tell you a little bit more about what we're going to do with this, uh, with this park. And we're going to give you the, uh, the real secret of how we're going to create value, how we're going to buy something for one price and make it worth two or three times as much. So you definitely want to listen to this. You're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is Addicted to Real Estate with the number two dot com. Robinson Insurance Group is Addicted to Real Estate's preferred insurance broker. Why deal with an insurance agent who only represents one company? Robinson Insurance Group can quote you all the companies and shop to get you the best insurance for your needs. Fix and flip, landlord coverage, last minute deals, no problem. Investor deals are no issue and nobody is ever denied. Call Robinson Insurance Group, 215-918-2555. That's 215-918-2555. I can't stand this traffic. I need a vacation. Slip away to Siesta Key in Sarasota, Florida. You can stay at one of our vacation rentals at the number one rated beach in the United States. Check out GoSiesta.com where you can rent a fully furnished vacation rental for less than the cost of a stinking hotel room. Check out GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. That's 863-2-SIESTA or GoSiesta.com. GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. I'm going.
Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. So let's talk a little bit about how we're going to create value in this trailer park, which I call Crescent Beach Mobile yeah, we, Home Park. What are we going to call this thing? I'm going to call it like Siesta Key Tiny House Village when we're done with it. Okay. Well, I don't know. You know, here, here's the thing. Uh, okay, well. We're, let's talk about the value play. The value play in, in a real estate deal is when you take something that's maybe underutilized or under rented. Uh, we've had several value plays down there actually, and you and you make it better. You make the make it in, a, in a commercial real estate. Yeah. You make a cash flow more because every piece of real estate that's a commercial property is appraised based on the function of its cash flow. The income. Yeah. So yeah, it's an income approach, right? You right. learn that in real estate school. So yeah. it's an income approach. You take the income approach to property. So right now, this guy is renting out these mobile uh, RVs. There's some motor uh, motor homes. There's some travel trailers. There's some of those fifth wheel trailers, and he rents them out for anywhere from five fifty to six hundred dollars a month. Yeah. So that's kind of what's there right now. So five hundred fifty, six hundred a month. You're talking ten thousand, about ten thousand bucks, all in all. Okay, so he's market. got he's got sixteen trailers, and essentially what he's doing is he's just renting out the ground. Right. Right. These so these people he finds them on Craigslist. He just recently told me he's got three hundred people in his phone. Who want to come into his park and I said well then what the heck are you renting for $600 a month for so I'm pretty sure he's under renting them and uh, one of the things that some landlords get hung up on that maybe this particular owner is hung up on as well is he was concerned well everybody else is paying 600 well first of all I never let that hold you back okay well the reason if someone asks me why is he paying 600 and I'm paying 850 I said because he rented two years before you and the price is going up end of story let's move on Right? He's so, grandfathered in, right? Sort of. Yeah, right. sure, you sure. You still raise your rents on the other. But if you got a good tenant, you don't, you don't raise them maybe as aggressively as you would market. Maybe you keep them a little bit under market rate. But the value the value with this particular play is that if you ever heard of a, a developer, and what a developer does is they buy land mm-hmm. by the acre, and what do they do? They add value to it. The value play for them is they chop up the land into parcels, Plots, yeah. and they take that those acreage and they make it lots. So you buy it by the acre, sell it by the lot. That creates a lot of value. Why? Because you, you you took the time to go through zoning. You took the time to go through land development. You had an architect draw up the plans. So you did things to, to create value, and now you can dice up that a little bit more. What, do, what does it cost to buy a uh, two-liter bottle of soda versus what does it cost to buy a glass of soda, right? Yeah. There's a value play there. You made it more convenient. You added ice to it. You poured it into a cup. I don't know. Right. So, so let's get into the specifics of it. All right. So I've got – just one spot in this park, and I'm getting $600 a month. A guy's bringing his RV in. He's sitting it there for six months, eight months, however long he stays, three weeks, whatever you work out with the guy. And you're getting 600 a month, and you don't have to do anything. When his toilet leaks, when his door breaks, whatever his problem is, it's not your problem. He wheels it to the mechanic shop. Right. It's not your problem. <laughs> Take it in okay? for service. <laughs> right. You're getting your 600 a month and the story. Right. So – what we're going to do with it is we're going to go out and buy these tiny homes, and, and we're going to have, as the leases run up on these RVs, we're going to have the RVs leave, and we're going to go buy a home. Now, the reason we're going to buy one is because now we control the property, and we get we like to buy houses after all, and now we get to do with it as we please. And what we're going to do with it is we're going to furnish it. Now, I don't know how much it's going to cost to furnish a tiny home, but I have a feeling it's going to be so insignificant it's not even worth counting. It's tiny. It's yeah. tiny. <laughs> It's tiny. So what we're going to do is we're going to rent them out as vacation rentals. We love the vacation rental business. Now, let's just suppose, hypothetically, keep the math easy, I can get $1,000 a week for somebody who wants to rent a tiny home, right? There is an awful lot of interest in those things today. Somebody might want to rent a tiny home for a week down in Florida, right near the number one rated beach in the United States. Siesta Key. Okay? Now I'm somebody who can provide that for him. And maybe I only rent it half the time. I just took a property in one parking spot that was making 600 a month, and now I'm making 2000 Now, it doesn't take a genius to figure out if I did that 16 times over into every spot in this park, all of a sudden this park is worth a lot more money. Why is it worth a lot more money? Because investment real estate is valued based on how much money it earns. Make it earn two and a half times more money, and the whole thing is worth two and a half times more. And. You know, Phil's not Phil's a real estate agent. I'm I'm not an agent at all yet, uh, but down in Florida I will be. But the appraisers, what the appraisers are the ones that that value the real estate, and they the way you run comps on a piece of commercial real estate is you run you look for comparable properties and what the cap rates. The cap rate 
is the capitalization rate. So if you bought the property all cash, how much, what percentage of that cash do you get back the first year net? Right. So you take the operating, the net operating income net operating. and you just do a conversion. What percentage of the net operating income is the purchase price? So for instance, if you had a million dollar property and it made $100,000 net, then that would be a 10 cap, 10 cap. 10%. And they don't – financing is not considered in a cap rate So, it, because borrowers have different rates. They have different loans. They have different terms. So if you're trying to keep apples to apples, cap rates always take into consideration just cash deals. And then the financing is something you work out after the fact. Okay. So with with a cap rate, with this property, they're going to look – it's, it's going to be tough to find a comp for, for – You're never going to find a comp. For you're not going to find a comp for this kind yeah. of place. But let's just say it's a 10 cap. If you're making 30000 a month, you know – you're 360000 a year at a 10 cap. That's $3.6 million. Oops. Right. Yeah. Which is a lot more money than what we paid for it, a lot more. Yeah. Let me give you a simple example so you can understand how value play can work on many other buildings. I bought a small apartment building once in New Jersey. That's right, the communist state of New Jersey. <laughs> And it was the only building I ever bought in New First Jersey. First question I was going to say is why? <laughs> why would you buy in New Jersey? Well, you know, I was, Sorry, New uh, Jersey listeners. <laughs> you know... Some people like to study and do their homework. I just like to buy things and see how they work out. I, I have a lot of confidence that whatever I get involved in, it's going to end up being successful. So I bought this seven-unit building, and one of the reasons that I like this building was the owner was providing all of the heat at the time that I bought it. And inside the basement, they had a boiler. This thing looked like it was the size of a Volvo, okay? It was enormous, all right? And it was about to die. So nobody was buying this building because they didn't want to have to fork up the money for the heater. So guess what I did when the heater died? I tore it to shreds and I got rid of it, all right? I, I threw it out. And what I did is I paid an electrician to come in and put a brand new upgraded uh, you know, circuit breaker panel in each of the seven apartments. And then I went in there and I put in these uh, electric hydrostatic heaters, the best ones that I could buy at the time. And they have, like, gel tubes in them. So electric heat heats them up, but it's very soft. It doesn't smell like a toaster. And they have nice. little knobs on them. So, so, so you can't make bagels on them? You have no, to. they can't make bagels on them. But what they can do is they can turn off all the heat in the house in the rooms that they're not using. And when they're hanging out in the living room at night watching TV, they can just have the heat on in there. And then when they go to their bedroom, they can just flip-flop it, okay? They turn it on in the bedroom. They turn it off everywhere else. And, it keep, and, and if, even if just one of them's on, it keeps the rest of the house pretty warm because these are just apartments, okay? They're just, it's just, just a small apartment ex- building. Explain to the listeners what the, why does that make it more valuable. Does okay. it make it more valuable okay. for the tenants or more valuable for you? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's making it more valuable for the owner. And the reason why is because this, the, the cost of the heating system with all the oil and everything that I was paying for when I bought the place was approximately $10,000 a year. The cost to renovate all of these seven units – circuit panels and upgraded the electrical panels and then got the heaters for all of these units was fifteen thousand dollars so i could keep on paying ten grand a year plus have to pay god knows how much it could have cost me i don't know what the what the new boiler would have cost me i never even bothered to look at it because i wasn't interested it didn't make any sense right transfer so now what happened is i made the building worth more money the value play was an investor is going to buy that building. Now, I still own that building. But if an investor came around and wanted to buy it, now I am no longer have this $10,000 a year in fuel cost to heat the building. Now what I'm doing is that's all been transferred to the tenants. Now, some of the tenants weren't too happy about the fact that now they have to pay for it. But guess what? They were already paying for their electric. So the electric bill went up some. I'm not exactly sure how much because I wasn't privy to see those bills. So all I could tell you is it's a smart move. Create value in your real estate deal. It's just one of the things that we do at Addicted to Real Estate. So when you do, you value that seven-unit building because it's a commercial building by the cap rate. So in order to change the value of the building, you change the expenses. The expenses went down by ten thousand bucks, so ten thousand dollars a year, and uh, you're you're you know you you really increased the value by reducing that expense. So you can raise the cash flow, you can raise the rents, that increases the value. You can lower the expenses, that increases the value. So any one of the two, those two things, you can make the building nicer, make, take it from a B-class building to an A-class building, that increases the value because the cap rates on different types of buildings are, are you know, comparable cap rates. You have to look for comparable buildings. Well, you're Place really Mr. Cap Rate today, aren't you? I don't know. This commercial stuff, I'm liking it, dude. I'm looking at another executive suite center. Ooh. Okay. We'll talk about it maybe on the car on the way home. 
So you guys, so here's a place we could talk about it. How about what are we doing on September 14th? Oh, this is Maggie's on the water. We're gonna try to drag out summer just a little bit more and go hang out by the water, Maggie's Waterfront Cafe. I uh, I like that place. It makes it reminds me of like going to the beach or something. It's actually kind of like a uh, like I feel like I'm in Seattle City. I don't know. I like it too. It's a beautiful place. I've had a lot of wonderful memories there. And I'm not going to tell you where they are, but uh, I that, trust me, I've had a lot of wonderful memories. There. Okay. <laughs> so Maggie's Waterfront Cafe. It's right at the Linden Avenue Boat Docks. If you know where that is in Northeast Philadelphia, right by the Academy Road exit in 95, September 14th. Yes, in 2016. This year, next Wednesday. 7 o'clock, come on in, come up to the second floor. It's 20 bucks to come to the meeting. We're going to talk about real estate for a couple of hours, and then we're going to go down to the bar where we're going to have the real meeting, the meeting after the meeting. That's where the real deals get done. That's where people be lending money, selling houses, and who knows what else. You don't want to miss that action. Maggie's Waterfront Cafe. You'd know about this already if you put your name and email address in at addictedtorealestate.com because I would have already sent you an invitation for it. What are we going to talk about at the Maggie's meeting? What's the topic? Do we have one? Yeah, I think we do, but uh, it's more like a general topic. I mean, we're going to talk about real estate investing, how to get rich investing in real estate, right? Learn how to buy houses with none of your own money. Learn how you, too, can one day be in control of your own destiny. Good things. Real estate business is a wonderful business. And we do all this without banks, too. We haven't, I haven't used a bank to buy a house in my life. Never, never, ever took money from a bank to buy a house. We've always, we, we tend to go to humans and, and look, for, uh, look to do deals with humans instead of institutions. I said that at a breakfast meeting this morning. Everybody's cracking up. I'm like, well, I don't know. I like, people can make decisions. You know, we had to buy this uh, flip down in, down in Siesta Key. We found the thing on a Friday. We had to close it in one week. Can I go to a bank and get that loan in a week? Probably not, you know, unless I have like an open line of credit. But, uh, you know, so. Well, there's people. two things that I really enjoy about banks. And right now I can't remember what either one of them are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's never bought a house. Using a, a bank? bank yeah. Finance. That's pretty amazing. No, I've refinanced. I've refinanced a couple that yeah. I bought. I bought one in cash. I went in using private investor money. I went in using other other means, borrow money from family or whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. I've, I've even taken credit card cash advances. So I guess in a way you could say that's from a bank. Mm-hmm. But I've never actually had a contingency where I'm buying a property contingent upon a bank. Well, one of the things that you'll learn if you uh, hang your license with Addicted to Real Estate or if you come to an Addicted to Real Estate meeting, one of the things that you'll learn is that we are, we are very different from most real estate investors. I've been doing nothing but real estate investing since 1989. I started when I was 23 and I'm 50. So 27 years experience under my belt. And, uh, and Jeremy, how long have you been in the business? I've been in business since the turn of the century. Okay. 2001. That's, easy to, <laughs> that's pretty easy to calculate. 15 yeah. years with Jeremy, all right? So make sure you come out to the meeting at Maggie's Waterfront Cafe in northeast Philadelphia, right by the Academy Road Exit at 95 on September 14th at 7 p.m. You can sign up for it at addictedtorealestate.com. I'm Phil Falcone, and I hope to see you next Wednesday. Come out to the show. And as always, guys, tune in Thursdays at 3 on WWDB, and you can listen to Addicted to Real Estate Radio right there. Take care. To say you got to know somebody or know somebody to get somewhere these days. To say you know.